everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Grand and Group Presents The Lockbox, brought to you by The Grand and Group, Arizona's number one brother and sister real estate team. And we are here again in Scottsdale, Arizona at our incredible studios that are run by Mr. Dave Pratt, for those of you that know the uh, old 80s and 90s and 2000s. Uh, sorry, Dave. I know not 80s, <laughs> 90s, 2000s. And we have our great co-host, Angela. How's it Hello. going? It's good. How are you? Good. How is the Brandon Hendricks at VIP Mortgage doing? We're all good. We're hanging in there, busy, but um, doing well. So, you know, Arizona's growing so much, and there's so much stuff going on here. Yeah. One of the things I love about the state as a native, and I know you're a native as well, mm -hmm. is that we've got some killer communities out here. We do. So we've got Greyhawk yeah. in Scottsdale, Beautiful. Fulton Ranch in Chandler, which is one of our favorites. Yep. Um, you know, we've got... Um, Stetson Hills, out by you. Yeah, huge. And then, of course, you know, we got the big community of Anthem and all these new ones popping up. Yeah. So what, what do you, one thing that these communities keep popping up is because there are so many families that are coming to town. Yeah, there are so many families from other states. So California, Oregon, um, Chicago. We are um, working with a lot of out-of-state buyers. And I think what they're really looking for is, is a lifestyle. They're coming to Arizona and going... Wow, in everywhere you look in Arizona, whether you're on the east side of town, the west side of town, up north, like there are so many different, um, so many different lifestyles to choose from. So I think what's really good is we have a lot of new communities that are very family oriented. No, it is. And yeah. there's a ton of kids and there's always so much for the kids to do. Mm -hmm. And the kids always need to be doing something, right? Right. So, and that's kind of a good segment into what we're doing today. Okay. So the story today is, is, is awesome. It's incredible, but it's also kind of sad because how you get to it and stuff. Okay. So our guest today, which I kind of blindsided Angela a little bit because yeah. I didn't give her a feedback on any of this stuff. <laughs> so we have um, Erica and we have Charles. Okay. And they run the uh, Colton... Cal Foundation. So it's Erica right. Cal, right? Correct. C O W E L L. And then Charles Keller. Okay. So um, Amy and I had an opportunity a few weeks ago. We were introduced by a mutual friend to go to this place over in Phoenix, and they said it's the Bat Cave. Interesting. And so I'm like, what okay, is so that? I figure it's like Batman and all that stuff, right. which sort of. So okay. anyway, so we get over there, and it's like walking into the 1960s Batman shows. You remember what the big thing, the pow and oh, wow? Oh, yeah. And so we get in there, and you get to play with these little things, and then you go upstairs, and you slide down a pole into Bruce Wayne's uh, office. Get out of here. So it's area. interactive. It's very interactive. Okay. So it gets better, though. And so then the kids get a ride on the Batmobile, oh. and there's the bat plane and everything else, and it's all real. It all works, and it's great. Wow. Incredible. So, so we'll get in that because we're going to let our guests talk about that. Okay. But first, I want to talk to Erica. Um, so her son was uh he, he passed away which is really sad and he uh passed away from leukemia correct, correct? Okay. yeah so how many years how, how that was in was? 2009 okay. um he spent the year fighting cancer and went for a transplant it didn't take so we were sent home on hospice in december of 2009 that's uh and you know i personally as a father and stuff i can never imagine the yes. grief and pain and stuff mm -hmm. so but what good the good thing that came out of this is that erica met charles Okay. And so, Charles, you owned a Batmobile, correct? That's true. A very long story short is my uh, two young boys got into the 66 Batman TV show. My, my son's now going to appear on a separate episode of your show, Charles II. But as a good dad, it seemed obvious to me that the right thing to do was to go out and test drive replicas of the 1966 Batmobile, which I did over a summer. I found one in Houston, Texas on Craigslist, brought it home, and then... An odd thing happens when you buy a retro Batmobile, the phone starts to ring. Some of the calls are a little odd, but I got this uh, call that you couldn't say no to. It was December of 2009, a Make-A-Wish wish granter had said, listen, I know this family, I, I granted a wish for them, but hospice is coming on December the 16th, and I want something to distract the family from the fact that hospice is coming to their house. Will you please come? So I rented a Santa Claus, I rented an elf, I got Christmas gifts, jammed it in the itty bitty little truck, and I took my Batmobile down to meet the Cal family who I'd never known anything about. And there were two important things, indelible things in my mind that happened that night. First thing, while uh, Santa Claus is inside doing his shtick, Christmas carols, uh, magic tricks, their itty bitty little living room is jam packed with kids, neighbors, relatives, all having fun, except for Colton, who's very ill. Um, and 
while I'm living that moment, I hadn't met Erica yet, but I could see her in the kitchen. And she was unable to join us because she was too busy helping the hospice people set up the morphine. And it just blew me away that in this one room, there's just abject joy. And in the next room, mortality awaits a three-year-old who's done nothing to deserve it. Right. And it, it, it just took my breath away. So after um, Santa was done, I found her husband, Earl, who's a proud member of the Chandler Police Department, pressed the keys of the car into, into his hand. I said, you've got to take your kid for a ride. Uh, we belted uh, Colton into the car. And I've been doing this now for 12 years with Erica as my wing, wing woman. And um, it's one of the few moments that I was, I'm really disappointed in myself. Because when I strapped Colton in, I thought of him as a cancer patient, a collection of his uh, symptoms. He was bald, he was bloated, he was lethargic. Right. But he and his dad went off, and uh, Colton had Down syndrome, so couldn't speak. So when he came back, he was doing sign language to his dad, and he was, he'd gone from looking sick, from being his symptoms, to all of a sudden he was happy, and he was having a great time. Oh, that's so great. I looked inside the car, I asked Earl what he said, and he said, he's asking for more, he wants to go again, and I said, go. And I sat there in the middle of the street, Earl was in absolute tears when he spoke to me, and I watched the taillights of the Batmobile get smaller as it went away, and I'm like, what did I just see? It just, something hit me like a ton of bricks, and it took me a long time to digest it. Uh, but the long and the short of it was I decided, maybe this is something I'm supposed to do. So I just started calling charities, and with the help of my uh, two sons who dress up like Batman and Robin, we just go to, to people's homes who were uh, suggested to us by charities, We'd give the keys to the dad, we'd give gifts to the kid, we'd give a small check to the charity, and that's where it all started. No, I, I think it's absolutely amazing. And when we had the opportunity to come down there, one of the things I expected to see was like, oh, this is, you know, all the superheroes. And one thing that stuck with us when you were talking about it, it's not about a superhero, it's about making the no. kid a superhero for the day, correct? Mm -hmm. It is. You know, it's very easy and it's extremely understandable. Eric and I deal with this all the time is that people, of course, naturally want to focus on the, the superhero um, side of things. But really, we try to accomplish three things. And Batman has nothing to do with any of them. Mm -hmm. We try to give families an incredible evening that they will enjoy for forever. Um, I didn't hear from Erica for two years after I first met them. And when she wrote me that letter telling me what their evening was like, it was like it happened yesterday. And that is uniform across the hundreds and hundreds of families we've been fortunate enough to meet. But we also try to give the children reason for hope for the future. And at the end of the evening, we give checks not just to the charity that nominated the child, but also to a charity suggested by the family. And in doing that, what we want to do is develop philanthropists of all ages, not just the small child who's granted the honor of giving the check right. to the charity, but we want everybody in that room. Whether it's, it's giving money, giving of your time, giving of your expertise, Giving needs to be an important part of life. And I've learned this through this experience, that this has been one of the most joy-filled things. You're right, they're tough stories. But when people come to the cave, they get to leave their problems at the door. And, and giving has become now an important part of my life, an important part of our mission uh, that I share with Erica is try to impress this ethos upon anybody who will listen. And if, if we need to do that inside a candy-coated shell that says Batman on the outside, we're all behind it. No, that's great. <laughs> Erica, were you a Batman fan prior to this? Um, I feel like I can't answer no to that question. <laughs> 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 I had never seen a Batman movie or an episode. But, you know, and in, in, in honestly, I can say that I've really never seen any of the Batman movies. I do watch the old episodes. However, for me, it is the, the only superheroes present are the kids. So, right. you right. know, I still feel like... I know a lot of superheroes. Does that count? Amazing superheroes. No, absolutely. 600 superheroes, you know. And so, and so you have to deal with this every single day. And I don't want to say deal with it because it's not bad. Right. But, so, but you're bringing joy to a lot of kids that are sick. And not all of them are terminal, correct? Correct. We do lifelong illness, terminal illness, children with uh, disabilities, uh, children of fallen officers. You know, any, any child who needs to be a superhero for an evening. So does it feel like this is kind of your destiny on where you're supposed to go? Because this yeah. is amazing that you would have someone like Charles just happen to come along, happen to own a Batmobile, and then turn it into, I mean, this is a really big foundation, and it's growing. It is. We are, we are definitely growing, and we're growing a lot. And we, I always say, you know, I, I would love someday to run out of children to serve. 
um, that means that we could close our doors and there are no more sick children who need our help. But, you know, it's, it's going to keep growing, and I'm lucky enough to be part of it. You know, I always say Colton, Colton was such a huge part of our lives, and losing him, the grief is something as a parent you never really deal with. But I'm lucky enough to get to see his legacy live on in every kid that comes through the cave, and that's not something everybody gets. And it's been healing and amazing and uh, magical, really. And I've made some great friends with the parents that have come through. No, absolutely. I'll bet. I'll bet. And Charles, I mean, you, you're actually helping parents that are going through probably one of the most difficult times in their entire life. You're giving them two hours of kind of a break, like almost like a vacation. Absolutely. You bet. You know, I, I, when I grew, I grew up in uh, Portland, Oregon, and my uh, grandparents, who lived three doors down from me, were an enormous influence. My grandfather was a civic leader, and he made a very public statement when he moved to Portland that he was going to take one-third of his time to make Portland a better place for all of its citizens. And I, I watched that at a very close proximity for many years. In many ways, he became my Bruce Wayne. And uh, it occurred to me as I, as I started down this road that, you know, Ira wasn't just doing that because it was important to help people uh, because he had the skill set to do it. He was also doing it to teach me a lesson, as was my grandmother, Loretta. And, and I, I figured out early on in this process that, you know, I came to Phoenix. We were discussing this. I came to Phoenix in the early 1980s. Uh, Phoenix has been an extraordinary place for me to be, to raise my, my two boys, um, and to have a fair amount of success. And one of the lessons that I think I learned from my grandparents is that it's very important for me to leave something extraordinary behind for the people of Phoenix. So I'm, I'm driven to do this project in many ways. It's not just helping the families, but it's also just being a good example to my kids, to everybody. And um, one of the things that we hope that happens, we'll, we'll discuss in a little bit what our next project that's coming up, but... I think our next logical leap is to have this become something that is known nationwide, possibly worldwide, and really becomes almost a calling card for the city of Phoenix. We were discussing earlier right. about, you know, what a giving city Phoenix is, that there is extraordinary generosity in this town. And uh, this could almost be representative of the thousands and thousands of different charities that make up our community that do extraordinary work every day. No, it, you're absolutely right. Now, you're working on a new project. Yep. I want to call it the New Bat Cave? Well, no. We, we actually, first of all, uh, a, a, a bit of a parliamentarianism, uh, we call it the Crime Fighting Cave. The Crime Fighting Cave. Crime Correct. Fighting Cave. And um, uh, for many years, I, I told the story last night, um, early on, so, you know, it started as a 2,500 square foot space where I was going to have uh, a few of my cars. A young child refused to go for a ride in a Batmobile. When I asked him why, he said, why would I get in the Batmobile unless I knew it was going to take me to the Batcave? And I didn't have an answer. That young man's name was Ethan. He's now a young adult doing very well. But he put a burr under my saddle. And one day I'm walking through this really grade C <laughs> industrial <laughs> complex. And I'm like, if I don't build a Batcave right now, I don't think I'll do it. And I think if I don't do it, I'll regret it. So with the help of a friend, we, we built something that approximated the old cave. And that has served us well for, for many, many years. But in our first couple of years, there was one particular night where we had a family come through, the Wolfsons. Uh, their two daughters are affected um, uh, with muscular dystrophy. And the way the father spoke to me, um, uh, Mike, at the end of the evening, he was so grateful. He was so amazed that his daughters both smiled and smiled at the same time and smiled with such uh, it was such genuine smiles and you could it was it was so extraordinary it just struck me and I was like okay this is no longer an experiment this is something that we really really need to do so with that in mind we formed a formal 501c3 before it was just kind of a you know let's had Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney let's put on a show <laughs> but we formed a 501c3 we purchased five acres of land and with the help of extraordinary partner, partners like Candelaria and Associates, which is in this building, our lead architect, which has worked pro bono for many years, and LG, one of the most extraordinary builders in this state or really anywhere in this part of the country, uh, we are going to build a five-acre campus, which will house a 25,000-square-foot mansion in which will be the world's only fully operational crime-fighting cave, and we plan to call it not... 
you know, the Millionaire's Mansion or something like that, or name it after a comic book character, we intend to name it the Monument to Compassion, because that's what we want to do. This is an in furtherance of people reading more comic books. This is in furtherance of people understanding how important it is for them to be kind to others and how much that will help them. We want to build a monument to an important idea. No, it was, and I was fortunate enough to see the plans on it, the, well, the outside part of it, and it's absolutely amazing yeah. what you guys are doing. And it's, it, what's great is it, you're given an opportunity to people that, you know, many of us, thank God, will never be able to go through what you guys went through. Yeah. And, and, you know, but you went through that, and you're able to help people that have been through that. Mm -hmm. And I think for a two-hour window, Angela's yeah. over here all teary-eyed. I am. That's a lot. Okay. Yeah. No, it, it is. I mean, it's, you know, as, as parents, it, it's tougher. But I, this was just a fantastic foundation that's it's right here in Arizona. Yeah I, yeah, I would love to see something like this go national. Can you imagine? All international. The, international. Why, why should, yeah, why, why, why stop are you there, limiting? right? Why yeah. are you limiting? Yeah, right. There's children all over the world, for that matter, that could really benefit. And parents, I can't, I can't even imagine. But um, I, I could imagine... You would want to do anything to see um, that smile mm -hmm. uh, come back, and and what you guys are doing is incredible. Well, I want well, I, I want to okay. mention I I'd love to have you talk about um, yeah, so, you know, what COVID did to us and what that, we learned about how yes. the multiplier effect. So that and that's cool. actually exactly what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. So you know we've been doing this in Arizona since 2009, yeah. and you know our goal has always been to go national. And mm -hmm. so when COVID happened and Zoom became big, we went, oh my gosh, we can't have anybody in, in the cave. What are we gonna do? Right. And we, one of our biggest partner charities is Hope Kids, and they have chapters in six other, or five other states. And so we have started doing virtual tours for children in other states. And I'm really hopeful that this is yeah. gonna grow. You know, I would love yeah. nothing more than um, the children's hospital in LA in their little teen room for everyone to gather and get a virtual tour of the back right. cave in it, or the crime funding cave. And it's been amazing. The, the feedback has been phenomenal because these aren't children who would really ever be able to travel to Arizona mm -hmm. to have it in person. Right. Um, and they don't know what it would, what they're missing. And so they absolutely yeah. love it. How so, incredible. Yeah, it's now, been great. How do the kids feel when you know, they come there? Like we went there and I was expecting to see, you know, superheroes and stuff. But now the kids are superheroes. So how does that play into everything? So I'll tell you, every once in a while we do have some kids going, where's Batman? Where's Batman? And I, and I said, oh, my gosh, we only need one superhero tonight, and that is you. And mm -hmm. th they eat that up. I mean, yeah. they don't ever ask again, and neither do the other kids. Because that is our focus from the second they walk through the door until the second they leave. They are treated like a true superhero, and it becomes very apparent very quickly that we only need one superhero, and they're it. No, it, it is. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I would tell you, you know, I learned so much by visiting the Cal's household. I could write a whole book just about that one night. But one of the things that I, I really learned is that, and we, we know this from trial and error, it, it's important that Batman or some other character not be there because it's about the child remembering an evening with their family. If you bring something else in, it's a distraction that nope. would take away from the evening. And so we yeah. want everybody there remembering. Because you've got to remember that you know when Colton was sick, that didn't affect just Colton. It affected parents, it affected grandparents. Siblings weren't able to see their parents as much. Everybody's affected. So we've tried to take that, not just the child, but their entire community and lift them up for a couple hours and just give them a reason no, to smile. No, exactly. And one of the great things is they get somebody like you that came along that's wanting to help out like that, mm -hmm. and then someone like you that's willing to kind of keep this legacy going. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah. it's, uh, total strength, yeah. don't you think? Absolutely. So, so, Charles, what's the best way people can reach out, maybe donate money? Absolutely. So you can go to, uh, if you want a, the quickie to go directly to our donation page, it's buildthecave.org. Build the cave. Buildthecave.org, but uh, uh, actually you should talk about time, treasure, and talent. You're, that's, that's your bailiwick. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, philanthropy is a big thing for us, and we think that more people need to learn about it. But, you know, there's so much more than just sending a donation of money. You know, philanthropy means giving time, treasure, or talent. So you can also go on our website, and there's a way to uh, volunteer, to sign up to become a volunteer. Um, if you know people who might be able to help us build a whole cave. Um, you know, there's so much more than just writing a check that could be very philanthropic and helpful to us. So on the website, coltoncowellfoundation.org, and it's 
C O L T E N. But if you go to our website, um, you know, there's ways to to reach out to us and tell us what your te- tell us what your talent is. You know, mm-hmm. tell us any way you think you could help or make a donation because those are very helpful as well. So. Yep. And the big one right now, of course, is building the monument to compassion. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have extraordinary partners, like I say, with LG Lee, Candelaria, and many subs that are going to be very generous. Um, uh, uh, AF Steel uh, last night is going to be making a very <laughs> a, a low ball bid. Uh, and so we need to also talk to a lot of people in the subs community mm-hmm. that if they're interested in becoming part of this project and being able to donate, either their labor, their materials, whatever they can do. Those are all people that we really need to speak to. Uh, We expect to have full city approval by the end of summer, and we're going to be moving around dirt. And all of a sudden, one day, the straw is going to break the camel's back, and we expect this this story is not just going to go nationwide, but worldwide. You'll be driving along the 10, Angela, and you'll see the mansion from the road. That's where you set it up, right? Not quite. Not quite. It'll be be a little bit set back. Secret undisclosed That's location. Right. So <laughs> Makes sense. Really talk about that. Uh, How it's got to be. But a little bit, a little bit south of the airport. But Eric and I, for many years, have talked about you know after the grand opening party and being in our offices and looking out the front windows, and there kind of always being a collection of people mm-hmm. there that are that are there. They come there to see uh, the home of a comic book hero, but we will have it in very prominent lettering right out in front, monument to compassion, and that's what we want them to leave with is that this is something that's about compassion. Live it yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. And so anybody out there listening to this, uh, you know, we love getting involved in different things. And this is one charity um, that I I really think that people should get involved with. Whether you own a food business, service business, or Mm -hmm. you just want to volunteer time, you're you're open to all that. Absolutely. We're, you know, like I said, COVID put a wrench in our plans. We we ran with it, but we're hoping to go back to full in-person. And it takes a lot to run a crime fighting superhero experience. Um, So, you know, we always we need about six to ten volunteers at every experience. We're mostly volunteer based. So we always are looking for volunteers. Absolutely. And how can they reach out to you? Um, So on the website, there is a place to uh, reach out to volunteer um, or honestly, they can just email me directly. Sure. And Mm -hmm. uh, the website? ColtonCowellFoundation.org. Okay. And if you can't remember how to spell it, if you go to BuildTheCave.org, it does take you to our donation site, but there's there's tabs to get you wherever you need to be once you're there. Perfect. That's great. So, Angela, yeah. I told you this was kind of like a this, bittersweet. Yeah, thing. it's incredible. I mean, very inspiring. I think what you guys are doing is amazing, and I cannot wait to be um, help be a part of it. Um, I think it's exciting that, as you said, it's not just about the money; it's about the time and like what you can bring you know, to, to help. So I will definitely be telling all my friends, like, hey, guys, we need to... We need female <laughs> MCs, by the way. Yeah, all yeah. right. Yeah. Well, there you yeah. go. Well, and, you know, there's nothing better than seeing a smile on a kid's face, especially yes. if they're ill. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So and they, they get to not think about that for a little while. So yeah. you know what, guys? This was great having you on there. Northwest. Angela, how can they reach out to you yeah, and sure. the Brandon Henderson um, team? They can reach out to us um, by phone, 623-979-5555. Ah, blah, blah. <laughs> 623-979-5523 or Hendrick team at VIPMTGINC.com. Charles, anything else you want to add to this incredible foundation? You, 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 actually, Charles is a very uh, spectacular person. He's got a, we should actually bring you on another show just to talk about you. <laughs> oh, God. He is, oh, dear he's, God. He's a really great guy. He's a really great guy and stuff. Yeah, and, you know, this like is it. one of the things I love about Arizona is that you come across people like Erica and Charles that are willing to just give. And, and you know, we've been around the country and stuff like that, but Arizona's a really great state for this. And just hanging out and just meet people like this. It's a, life, has been a, life has been a great journey, and I, I've gotten a lot of good breaks, but I, I, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's important to share all that. No, I, I, I agree. I would agree. Erica, you're always fantastic. Thank you. Thank so. you so Thank much. You. Hey, yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed this bittersweet episode of The Lockbox. We'll see you next week. I'm Jason Grandin with The Grandin Group.